All right, welcome everybody. I am so excited that this meeting is happening. <laughs> it's been in the works for some time. Um, yeah, I mean, like six, seven months, something like that. And uh, we're finally here at the kickoff meeting for the volunteers. And I am excited that there's 11 people here. And I'm excited for all the positive feedback that we got. And I know that the energy, <laughs> I know that the energy that you guys have is going to make this awesome. So um, welcome. And I think we should go around and do some introductions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call people out just so there's no confusion about who's going next. Um, and I'll go first. So I'm Marie Norton. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. It's a long title for community manager of sorts. Um, I've been in this role since November of 2019, and I've been involved in Fedora since 2014. So my involvement with Fedora really centered around graphic design and Fedora badges. I, um, I led up the Fedora badges design aspect of, of that sub project, worked on that throughout the years. Uh, and now I've stepped into this role. So I work full time uh, to help the community in a variety of ways, organizationally, with initiatives, etc. So that is my intro. And next I will pass it to Alberto. Thanks, Marie. Um, I'm Alberto. I'm from Mexico. I'm an ambassador science, maybe two years ago, maybe. Um, I am here for help everyone to make this uh, new initiative to ambassadors uh, more active, more uh, healthy in the community, and. On this way, we can get more events, get more contributors, and, and it's, that is all. Thanks, Alberto. All right, next is Justin. Hey. Turn my video on there for a second. Um, so my name is Justin. Uh, I've been, my handle in IRC or Telegram is JWF, JW Flory. Um, I've been involved with Fedora since 2015 and I've been an ambassador since like the end of 2016, 2017. Um, I'm really interested in this work because I've seen, I've worked with a lot of folks who were ambassadors way longer than I have and I've gotten to learn from their experiences and the things that they, um, kind of the, the past lessons of the ambassadors from five, 10 years ago. And I'm really interested in ways that we can continue including more people, bring other people in. And I think this this revamp is the way to do it. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. I'll throw it back to you, Marie. Awesome, thanks, Justin. All right. Oh, we're getting more people. All right, um, I apologize if I mess up anybody's name, please correct me. Next would be John V. If you'd like to introduce yourself. All right, we can come back around. Uh, Osama. Yeah, hello, I'm Osama. Uh, second year computer science undergraduate from India. And Janvi is my friend, and I bought all these people Janvi sums here. So she is not speaking, but she will. Fine. And I'm second year student, and I think we can have more people in open source community. So I want to contribute to this. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for being here. All right. Next, we have Sayak. Hey, everyone. Uh, I hope there is no echo from my end. Uh, so hi, man. my name is Sayak. Uh, I am an open source contributor and have been contributing to Fedora for uh, quite a few years now, uh, but I was never very active 
on the community side of it. Uh, so recently, I started engaging more with the community uh, in, in the last one year. And uh, I also work at Red Hat uh, as a senior software engineer. Um, I'm mostly into web development. But I also uh, dabble with uh, a lot of dev DevOps and stuff. So I have been a Fedora user for almost uh, 10, 12 years now. And uh, yeah, so I have been uh, like contributing to many roles like localization, uh, testing, design, uh, whenever, whichever thing I thought I could have some kind of an impact on, I tried that. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about the Federal Ambassadors revamp and that's why I'm here. I think I can give back something. Awesome. Thanks, Sayak. All right. Next, we have Christian. Christian, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Do you hear me? We can hear you, yeah. Yeah, fine. Sorry for the delay. How is the meeting? Oh, now I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Uh, no. Do you hear me now? Oh, sorry. I try again. There we go. Go ahead. Still there, Christian? Hi, sorry, I'm a little late. No, no worries, Edward. We're just doing introductions. Um, I will call your name out in just a moment. I'm going to skip over you, Christian, if you want to do an intro in the chat. Um, next is Shams, if you would like to intro yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm Shams Nuri from Kolkata, India. But I am a second year student. Me and my friend want to contribute something. So we have not, we have not so much experience in this field. Still, we want to help our some contribution, give some contribution in this. So we are here to gain some experience. So thank you. Welcome. Next is Circo. Would you like to introduce yourself, Circo? Not I sure. Have with I'm not sure if they can them. hear. Yeah. Um, okay. Next, we have Solange. All right. Next, we have Umar. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello, my name is Oman Haruna uh, I am from Nigeria, Africa. I have been contributing to open source programs like Lender and REST. I then I become the Fedora ambassador and it's good to be in the community. Awesome, welcome, glad to have you here. Um, then we have Vipul. Hey, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, I'm Ripple. I work in Fedora CI infrastructure side of things. Well, I try to, and I'm very excited to be here. I'm looking forward to help as much as I can. That's it. <laughs> All right. So that was everyone, but I left the best for last, or I don't know how to say the best, uh, but our fabulous co leads. Mariana and Sumatro. So um, we, um, you know, as Mindshare Committee, we came up with some names of people who are, uh, you know, they've put a lot of time into the community, they know it well, and they've organized plenty of events and, you know, they've have experience doing ambassador things, being in these different teams. So uh, uh, we have Mariana Bala and Sumatro Mukherjee who agreed to co-lead um, this whole task force with my support. So, Mariana, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Um, hello, everyone. I hope you heard me. Uh, thanks for joining our meeting today. I am Mariana. I joined the project uh, back in 2016. I have been uh, organizing federal events, either local and uh, one international one. I have met some of you at the two flocks that I have been. And I'm pretty excited about this new initiative that we are launching now. Awesome. OK, Sumantro next. So hey, guys, I'm Sumantro. I work for the Federal QA team. I've been in Federal for, uh, since 2016. And this, I mean, I welcome you, ev every one of you in this call. And we are looking out for your support, questions, uh, any discussions. And hope to spend a lot of time with you guys you are and move up with the score. Awesome. Thanks, Sumantro. Okay, there were a couple people who I missed. Either they came in later or their audio wasn't working. If anyone else wants to intro themselves now, go ahead. I see Edward on the call. Maybe you want to say hi. And Christian, maybe. Hi, people. Sorry for the delay. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So I'm Christian, I live in Spain. Um, I have an ambassador uh, a, little, a few months, uh, three, four months, I think. And I now have uh, yet a project to, to help uh, with Fedora. But I think uh, I open to, to hear, uh, hear you about the, the projects to, to come help. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, I need um, help Fedora, there's something um, method, I don't know, sorry. Um, That's okay, it sounds awesome. Thanks for being here. Edward, do you want to go? Uh, hi. Uh, well, I'm Edward Lucena. I'm just part of the Mindshare committee. I try. I will try to help you in everything, every way I can. Uh, hopefully, we can revitalize uh, the the ambassador program. I'm, I'm ambassador uh, from Latin region. I was previously in Venezuela. Now I'm working on Chile. Uh, it's been a while since the last time I organized an event, and but uh, I want to to retake that approach because uh, there is no more active. Uh, Ambassador here in Chile. So hopefully with this revamp, I can retake uh, ambassador activities here in Chile. Thanks, Edward. Circo, are you able to hear us or intro yourself? We can't hear you. Maybe you're muted. That's fine. If you don't have audio, you can just uh, put something in the chat. OK, so we're going to move on past the intros um, just to keep things moving along. Uh, the next thing that we kind of want to just talk about is a brief description of the revamp, right, and what it's all about. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so the ambassador program is, uh, it's a, it's a long-term program. It's been around for a long time, way before my time in Fedora. And it's experienced a lot of successes, changes, um, and over the years, uh, it just didn't quite, um, you know, it didn't scale, but as the Fedora project scales, you know, and it, it maybe it needed to evolve and it didn't quite evolve in certain ways, uh, you know, decisions were made by different bodies that affected the ambassador group. Um, there was all these kinds of different things that contributed to it kind of going to a bit of a decline, right? So over the years, I heard, you know, stories from my fellow contributors about ambassador program and kind of continued to hear those stories as I came into this role. And, um, I also, uh, I, so part of what I do is I work in Red Hat, 
uh, in part of a team called Open Source Program Office. So something I did with them was a book club. We read this book called Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. It's a great book. I would re recommend it to, to anyone who's interested in community management or change or change management, anything like that. Um, and so we did like a case study after we read this book on Fedora Ambassadors. I'm like talking and thinking about what exactly needs to change. Because changing a huge program, it's like kind of like this huge idea and it might seem overwhelming. Like what are the actual small things that we need to do to make this program work, right? So I, you know, I had these conversations. I gleaned the mailing lists for all of the different things um, that uh, I gleaned the mailing list for all the different things that people um, were struggling with or frustrated with or um, you know maybe they had challenges with over the years and put those together and you know said like well, what are the main issues here the main issues are there's not like enough support or clear support there's not like a clear structure for who's doing what there's all kinds of overlap and resources left and right uh, there's not as much transparency about decisions that are being made um, you know there, so there's just all these kinds of things right so that's so I had this you know a case study that I was armed with and a bunch of caffeine and I just sat down and I I hacked the proposal together in like two days. I said, we're just gonna make this happen because really in the end, it just takes some movement and some people who really, um, really care about it, right? So, okay, so we're here, that's the background, that's how the proposal um, came to be. And actually, I think I'm gonna pass it off because I've been talking for so long. Um, I think, you know, Sumatra and Mariana, we can kind of mirror some of the stuff we're going to, well, actually looking at this agenda we wrote up. Um, you know what? I guess I want to open this up for just like questions off the bat or like, you know, just like general comments, that kind of thing, because really from here, I want to have an understanding of like how much you guys have read the proposal, how much you're aware of like what needs to be done, et cetera. Um, like we can talk about some of those things um, or we can kind of focus in on um, exactly what this team of people is going to do. So if you want a better, we could go into like a better understanding of the overall picture, or we could talk about like, hey, this is what this team's going to do. So maybe drop in the chat. If you feel like you need an overview of the whole thing right now, or if you're looking to, you know, really like jump into um, some tasks. Justin, that's helpful. Okay, so a TLDR of where we are now, right? So I can, Mariana, do you wanna give a synopsis of what we're doing with the Trello board? So um, the proposal uh, was introduced to the Mindshare, I think around July, and then uh, Mindshare proposed a few names to lead this initiative, and two of them was myself and Sumantra. Uh, we have been meeting together with Marie, Sumantra and myself, the three of us, since late July, and trying to give this initiative a shape. Uh, the very first thing that we did was um, create a Trello board, for everyone who's not familiar with Trello, it's practically a task board where you create different tasks, assign them to people, and then track um, activity and the, um, how the tasks goes. 
Uh, I think someone shared the Trello link. You can check and you can propose, uh, I don't know, any changes or any ideas you might have for that. That might help us during the process. Uh, this is what we have come up with for now. Some of these tasks are um, ongoing tasks. Some of, a few tickets have been opened to the DNI team and the Comops team. And we have asked um, from these two teams, from one to conduct a survey and the other one to conduct some uh, interviews. Uh, this is the very first um, stage and phase of everything. This is the first volunteers meeting that we're having. Uh, we have also published a blog post on the community blog that described, uh, that was published in August, that described our progress since that moment. The next one will be in 10 days, I think. The idea is to have one every month in order to let the community know what is going on and where we're at, and also the different teams within Fedora. Um, so this is it, pretty much. Cool. Okay. So specifically to this team, I just dropped in the link and this is kind of the, the three main tasks that, um, that this team is going to be working on. Okay. So a lot of, th there's going to be like a lot of different aspects to the, the revamp overall, like maybe like logos and documentation, but this is what I'm going to have you guys working on. Okay. So there's a couple things on here, and I think maybe Sumatra, do you want to go over them? So, yeah, so the very first thing that we came up when we started thinking about this task force was how to, so there, there was an ongoing debate which was happening for a long amount of time where um, there was a question of who is an active ambassador and how do you classify if they are active or not in general. And there was no criteria that Ferrara had which told us right off the bat who is supposed to be considered active. So when we tried to kind of clean up the group for ambassadors to know who are the people who would be actually be interested, it became very hard for us because there was no set SOP for that. So we hacked around a bit and we brainstormed with Marie and a lot of other contributors in Mindshare. And we came up with a, a script which would basically look for Fed message activities for the last one year. And uh, the Fed message activities, if you don't know, is basically any activity that you do in the Fedora ecosystem with your FAS account. So that it be packaging, a QA, testing, design, badges, any kind of tangible work that gets tracked. And essentially, we would be clubbing that up with some non-Fed message activity, like writing a magazine blog post or community blog post, participation in Fedora meetings and stuff like that. We'd be taking that into consideration to find out a bunch of active ambassadors and we would do a bit of uh, ambassador group cleanup as you will. So that's the very first thing that we would try to identify. Um, there, there is a process how we are going to do it. It's not going to be like we run a script and we tell you. It's going to be more of like we sending an, um, you know, um, a mail to everyone who is a current ambassador and telling them uh, to reply if they don't or if they don't reply in two weeks or we don't get a response then we are we are going to go ahead and you know move them to something like uh, ambassadors emirates which is a, a new group that we we are creating and we would be putting all the ambassadors to ambassador emirates status and there would be a document how to get yourself back to ambassadors if you are tagged wrongly as an ambassador amb emeritus. So that's that's also that's the very first thing of this task. The next part is what we what is the core identification point for everything. We wanted to we we found very small say in comops it's it's a big large team which has a part of join advocate ambassadors and you know it does a lot of things what we want to do is we want to consolidate 
that entire thing into one single comops doc page where it would be very easy for people to understand and understand who is doing what and that addresses the question that we have been trying to uh, ask from the community for, for a certain amount of time so that's the second task which if you look at the Trello board it says role handbook that would basically be like who is doing what and it's it's going to be like you know gather to gather feedback from ambassadors mindshare mailing list tickets and then putting that up on a on a you know docs page as a as a final thing the next uh, the next part of this the the next part of this is the com ops ticket so there was a com ops ticket which was filed and i think murray would you like to talk about the com ops ticket a bit so the com ops ticket is actually uh, that's for the com ops team so the last point for the you guys the ttf the temporary task force <laughs> is um, the mindshare seats, okay? So we basically just need to think and formalize a process for those two seats because there will be an ambassador seat and a com op seat, and currently there's really no process to be changing that. Now, I have the insight that I'm on mindshare, and actually over on mindshare, we are talking about the process for um, putting new reps onto the Mindshare Committee, you know, being able to circulate more people out so that they can experience being in a leadership role or, you know, give a different perspective to the committee. So um, I do think that uh, it's still something that we want to consider as a team from our end as well. Um, so. Uh, so I think, um, okay, sorry, I got distracted there. I was looking at the third item, right. So the mindshare seats, uh, we might want to pause on that one and come to that one a little bit later, just because I know mindshare is working on it, right? So the first two tasks might be the two um, to really focus on. Now, I want to take a second, um, right, so... If you have specific questions, circle, definitely put them in the chat. Um, we're going to try to avoid stop energy here. Um, there have been things that have been tried in the past. That was a different time. We are here and now, and we're going to put our heads together and try to do our best. Historical knowledge on what has worked and what hasn't worked is super helpful. So I definitely want that input, but I don't think we can say that it's definitely not going to work again. It might work uh, with your, you know, input on it and with, you know, new perspectives. We're in a new time. So I do want to say that this, this, especially the role handbooked task is a chance for us to think about what it means to be an ambassador in 2020, right? Like the ambassador program, as we know it, had started, you know, back in the day when we were burning CDs. We're clearly like we've come a long way from that, right? We live in a different world. So this is a time for like, you know, these minds here. What do you want? What kind of tasks and what kind of things do you want to be doing as an ambassador in 2020, right? This is a chance for us to change and evolve that. And like even potentially be like a leader, right? In this, Fedora is a project that people look to for for different community things. I've actually heard that people, you know, model after our ambassador program. So we have a chance here to do something really, really cool. So, um, right? What's the task for ambassador? So the task for ambassadors. Um, community outreach. It's definitely not about writing ma magazines and packages and so on, right? So it's supporting. Uh, so we can take a look at just the revamp wiki page, if somebody has that link handy. It's in the chat. I found it. Um, 
we want to talk a little bit about, you know, what they're going to do. You can go to this. this link specifically but that conversation is really a bigger conversation you know like what is the role of these these different teams like you know that is what that second task is so I'm not trying to figure all that out this moment and I don't think that we can um, I think we can start the conversation about it but like for example we have you know, chance to do virtual events now. We have uh, social media. We could, you know, set up some kind of social media chain where we're all sharing tweets and making sure everything gets promoted. I mean, like, there's really a lot of different things. Like, we could, you know, work more with the design team and getting, like, updated graphics to put on social media. Um, these are the kinds of things that I'm thinking of, but I have a design mind, right? So my mind comes from, like, these infographics and I want to make pretty things to share on social media platforms but I know that there are other ideas and other minds and other places that you guys are hanging out in so we need those ideas too about um, you know what is a modern ambassador you know a tech or open source ambassador what does that look like for us right so I think that's actually a nice thing we could put in this document we have like just asking the people who are on the call right now, what does a Fedora ambassador do in the year 2020? Uh, oh, go ahead. Answering it, answering it immediately would be a little early because that's also kind of responsibility of what this task force and people who have who are trying to figure out together so that will be the also a goal of what exactly mindshare's responsibility is so right now exactly saying okay this are these are the two things that ambition has to do and nothing else maybe too early the people working on it focus on it maybe work on together collaborate give your ideas and in the end once this is successful we'll have a very nice handbook where we can exactly identify what are the things you are supposed to do as your ambassador specific role so yeah Right. So, so yeah, we want to talk about and brainstorm like the kind of things that we want to do. And then we want to streamline those processes, right? And make and um, basically make all the resources and make the, the path to that happening as easy as possible, right? For new people, for us to do, we want, we want to make our new processes um, easy and clear to, to, to function. Um, so that's going to be like part of it. And so I think if we can uh, take some time uh, between now and the next meeting or however it's going to go, there's parts that are up in the air. And I thank all of you for your patience. <laughs> um, I know that there was a little bit of, uh, it was a little bit rushed with the meeting. So I'm thinking um, that we'll have another meeting next week, right? So we can reflect on these things, we can introduce anybody who's new, um, and we can kind of get some first steps. I want uh, everyone to kind of be able to marinate in this stuff and think about it because it's not just about, you know, getting into the docs and doing this. This is a brain task for us, right? Like, what do we want this to be? And what do we want it to look like? And um, how are we going to get there with it? And I know that like there's some really cool ideas out there. Cool, Circo, that's totally true, right? Um, and I think so Circo mentioned in the chat that it's like letting people choose their own way on how to do things. And I think that's great. And I think that there are some people who um, that works really well for, but I think I've, I have personally heard a lot of stories from people who are like, we don't know how to get resources. We don't know how to do this thing. So we're just going to do our thing off in the corner, not really attached to Fedora, and they're not benefiting from the resources 
um, that we could provide them, whether it be monetary support or some uh, guides on, you know, making the event a little bit better or just, you know, nowadays we're going to be using things like Hopin, right? So we want to be able to give that support um, to the people who want it, right? So there are going to be people who choose to do things their own way. And I'm just going to say, go ahead and do it your own way. That's fine. But there are plenty of people who are looking for guidance and want a clear process, right? I'm just, yeah, I'm reading um, over here. Edward, that's a really good point. You know, and how do we, how do we, um, how do we adapt the revamp to suit that? Because everyone's cultures are going to be different. Um, you know, a release party will, we would throw in the U.S. would be different than a release party we might throw in Mexico City, but now it's all virtual. So, and we're going to be planning the release party together. So that adds another layer of confusion on top of <laughs> the, the COVID confusion we have like in the rest of our lives, right? Um, well, Sergo, I do have to say that there's we can't undo the past, right? And I wasn't even involved in the ambassador program at the time. And there's you can't you can't undo what happened in the past. So instead of that, we're gonna try to move forward and heal and let go of those things and um, try to embrace like a new path forward, right? It sucks what happened. And I think we can I think there's no one here that's arguing that things progressed or evolved in not a great way, but that's not something we really, really want to rehash. We've done it a lot. We've done it on mailing lists. I have it in the revamp. It's not worth spending more of our time, um, like really just focusing on that. So, so I think, you know, it's been about 40 minutes. I'm going to open the floor for comments, questions, um, whatever you guys want. One of the things that I always think about in these conversations is um, thinking about how we can decentralize some of the things, some of those pain points from the ambassadors before where we had just one way of doing things and that one way of doing things didn't always work in different regions. Um, I'm just wondering what are ways that we could better adapt the processes in 2020 so that folks can use the knowledge and experience they have of their local community because that's what i think is so important right so one thing i included in the revamp was um the translation team being a part of uh the revamp process so that we could actually work on like uh having translations of the different resources that we're going to make for local areas. So I think what we should do is do the ones that we know for sure, like say we have a flyer for an event, right? So we make it in English and then we make it in these 10 languages. And then forever, for any for any person or you know didn't get it in their language, they're able to request it in their language. Is that kind of a solution that might work towards decentralizing the the whole crop like that kind of thing like giving people uh the resources in their own language i'd be curious to hear from people like uh mariana and uh, alberto just just how those things work in in other countries because i think I, I i'm hard to comment on that as a native english speaker <laughs> well uh i was in africa but uh, for me, the, the last release party I did was in Fedora 26, and I remember requesting the the, the flyer from to, to the design team, and I translated by myself. 
I was uh, the text in English, so there wasn't there was no translation from from the design directly. Translation was done me in Inkscape. So uh, I think that's the part that Marie is trying to reach here to avoid that. I'm also remember when we translate the uh, chit chat cube or uh, from English to Portuguese because the translation don't exist. Uh, that is a um, amazing cube for uh, with some comments in in every face is very cute and we translate it to Portuguese because the translation don't exist. Uh, I remember that from some of our meetings on ambassadors on LATAM. So if I can share my experience with translations, I can say that translations was the very first um, thing that I did within Fedora. I created my fast account at a translation sprint that someone else had organized. And when it comes to posters and flyers, and for every single event that I have been involved as an organizer, I we did them by ourselves on our local language. So that was not a little more like a huge problem for us. It was still, it was something that we did. Sure. I also just happen to know that your community is like more artsy. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I right? Am I? Like, uh, you have, like, yeah, you have like designers in your local community, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we do. I, I'm not surprised, um, but it would be cool to offer something um, to, you know, just a, a, the rest of the community where there's not a lot of designers. I think you are uh, just in a lucky position <laughs> to have designers there. But um, yeah. I do agree with you. I mean, like, it, I'm not going to try to police people and say, oh, you can't use that poster unless it's, you know, like, squished the Fedora logo and just looks like complete, you know, trash or whatever. But, like, you know, it's fine if other people use different posters. That's fine. They can go do that. What we're going to do is give resources to people who do want them, right? So that's what we're going to we're going to focus on that crowd of people because the confusion about who's doing what and what we're here to do is, is part of why this got to where we are. Like, what are we doing? Why is what's happening, right? So we're gonna clarify that. We're gonna clarify process. That's what the role handbooks are all about. More questions? We are talking about a lot of serious stuff over there, over here. So, a uh, lighter question. Do we have a logo for the ambassadors program? So, we currently, uh, I, I don't think so. There was like an, like a, kind of like a standard Fedora logo, like where you put in certain text with the Fedora logo. I think that might exist. I'm not sure where. Um, um, but <clears throat> it's something that I want to do. And Mismo, the design team lead, jumped on the original ticket and said the, the design team's on board. And since we have all these different things under the community outreach bubble, um, I was really thinking we could have like a cool logo set of like five, six logos, right? We have Com Ops team, we have ad advocates, ambassador, ambassador, at emeritus and join and they're all versions of a community outreach so i'm just imagining this totally rad set of icons um, that we get to use and uh, make swag with etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, maybe even you know something that people can wear uh, on camera or at events when we're eventually getting there um i definitely think a brand is going to get people on board for what we do Yes, definitely. You'll see in the revamp proposal that there's uh, that part in there as well. I'm just going to read the chat here. Uh, 
um, yeah, so swag is definitely uh, another conversation that needs to be had. Um, and it really, I think in the end, like the, the process that we have for making swag right now through the Mindshare Committee works really well. And if you don't know about that process, we can talk about that process, right? So Mindshare is the one that approves swag. That is how that works. If we needed to have some kind of special case where we needed something in a specific amount of time or it was way, way more cheaper or et cetera, et cetera, uh, Circo, it's been working great for about, I don't know, since I've been here. So a year. I haven't really had really any complaints about swag. Um, and people have been getting it. So I think we're actually doing really great as a Mindshare Committee on the swag. Um, Circo, I have not seen a request for swag on the Mindshare Committee repo from you. So I don't know what you're asking me for. So I think that we need to, to uh, I don't know, it's, it's the, the way that all ambassadors are always towards against Mindshare. Uh, and we set a lot of ways to communicate with with all regions and people were always uh, there were people that adjust to the new processes I think uh, in Latin it was very well except for for Brazil that have a really really big problem with the custom but uh, there is also a lot of people that complains a lot I never do something or approach any of us in the Mindshare committee to, to, to try to solve the problems and a lot of people seem to be stuck in the past. We need to move forward. We need to start uh, to stop saying, we are going to be replaced from advocates. Uh, we are not taking, uh, and we're not taking into account anymore because now they, have, they want to replace us with advocates or they want to move everyone to emeritus. Oh, please stop that. Please stop that. Just read the documents, try to reach people if you have doubts, try to okay? Please stop to be stuck in the past. That's the idea of the ban. The ban is not to replace anyone. It's just to create a new power for everyone. Yeah. That's the idea. Yes, Edward, I could not agree Please with you Please stop more. being the past and move on. It's, it's enough is enough. So, mm. so one thing I'm, I'd like to add. Go the, ahead. Um, since sometime that you know uh, mindshare was formed if you look at the ticket queue if you look at the number of issues that were filed we have uh, there was a time when it took about 2 weeks to even approve an event request and we got it down nailed to 3 days and far i remember we had even a sla to confirm the event and get the vote seen within a week for even events which were much bigger than $500 to $1000 so we 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 actually got things working mostly when it came to Mindshare. So I think this, this, I mean, this is the thing that we want to continue forward with. I mean, that worked really good for a lot of regions. So uh, just a Maybe. bit of, uh, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to give a bit of a, uh, like, my own perspective to this. So swags are one topic that I've seen uh, has been the issue of debate across a lot of communities. And it's not just Fedora or Fedora ambassadors. Uh, and I've been around long enough to see the previous ambassador programs, though I was not a part of it. Um, and I used to hear this complaint from a lot of people at that time. I also saw this issue in a lot of other communities. Uh, so. I would probably say that if something works uh, currently, if something is working good currently, uh, it's okay. But at the same time, uh, since we know that this is a problem area that can anytime, uh, you know, escalate into a bigger problem or has the potential of uh, turning into a bigger issue, 
we can probably uh, make sure to keep monitoring the swag situation from time to time so that if the current mindshare model is at some point uh, starts failing or starts uh, not performing well we can also at the same time look at other options like okay uh, if shipping strikes does not uh, work as uh, into to some places because of say uh, government regulations or something like that we can look at uh, other possible options of local local procurement and stuff but those are uh, things that we can only start looking at once we actually go ahead with the revamp and step by step uh, take a step by step uh, approach towards identifying the individual issues right now and figuring them uh, them out uh, we had a lot of issues in the past uh, that is a valid concern uh, let's keep that in mind and start uh, trying to develop a model around uh, you know uh, it's probably something that i have an analogy from the software world that is uh, if something is failing try to uh, be agile about it and try to uh, figure a solution for it so let's maybe just jot it down somewhere that this has a potential of being a problem in the future. Let's just yeah, I, I just want to add a historical piece on top of that because I think that that was a great uh, a great add too. Um, I, I think where some of the frustration is coming from is that we tend to look a lot at the the process, which has changed a lot over the ten years, but. There's also ways we can think about equity in other ways with things like shipping times. Like even if we have a process that works and a process that works fast, me as an American in the US, I'm gonna be able to get things a lot faster than someone who is in basically a country where Red Hat does not have a cost center, I think. Um, so I think there's potential for us to really think in new and interesting ways about how to explore local partnerships and collaborations with places that we don't have strong logistic support from the Red Hat side for getting things out. Maybe working with local producers is a really interesting way we can think about how to approach this. But I, I, I really think that we have a process that does work. And I think like um, Sayek said was, I think we have to really start with this revamp and approach it bit by bit. And uh, I think this is the right path. And I think maybe that might be some of the background to where the frustration is around swag in terms of the things that aren't processed, that aren't Fedora making decisions, the things that go beyond that. So I, I, that's why I knew it wouldn't be really a 10 minute conversation. It's a lot to unpack there, but I just think there's some, it's helpful to explain some of that, where that frustration might be coming from. But just Thanks, to add Justin. That. Thanks, Justin. Okay. Um, we only have a couple minutes left and the, Fedora Video Council call is coming up right after this. And it's starring your ambassador colleagues and me talking about the ambassador revamp. Um, this was something that they put me on the calendar for months ago and I kind of forgot about it. Here's the link if you want to join. It's going to be a lot of the same stuff we just talked about, but it's going to be geared a lot towards the bigger picture. So if you want to come and learn about, you know, the bigger picture and sit on in on this video call, um, you should come and come and join us. But I really quickly want to say thank you so much to everybody who showed up here today, gave their thoughts, gave their time, gave their consideration. Um, like someone is typing so loud. I think it's Justin. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> It's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm so, so excited for this revamp. And I know that there's been challenges in the past, right? But we're going to overcome them. Like, if you look at the revamp, I put a pledge in there. And I'm just going to say it really quick. Because I think it's important for like, where we want to be moving forward with this, right? So ComOps team members, that's everybody here. That's the ambassadors, the join, the ComOps, all that. We can recognize when something isn't working and want to change it. We're willing to grow and try new things. We believe that we're in control of our own abilities and we can learn and improve. We're excited to learn new skills. We take action. We encourage our teammates and try to understand their ideas. And we understand that failure is an expected part of change 
and we're willing to adjust as we go along, right? So those are some fair, farewell words. We're going to get out um, a, an announcement for the next meeting and we'll make sure to put that in, in all the places that you're gonna see it. So if you don't hear anything, it's because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, you know, Smontro and Mariana are volunteers, so we're gonna just thank them um, profusely. Yes, thank you, Marianne and Sumantro and everyone who came.